You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Guernsey County Game Warden Roby Williams joins us for two segments. He's got a lot to talk about. And Stephen Bunn has the details on the upcoming Friends of the NRA Banquet. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to this brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from the U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Thank you to U.S. Bank for allowing us to be here and utilize this great facility with a great view. That's right. Roby Williams is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, Woo. and for not just one, but two, two segments because there's so much to cover. But how you doing? Thank you. I'm good, doing real good. Thanks for having me up here. You know, you've got so much to cover. I've got a sheet here, and uh, the first thing I see is the ginseng case, and you and I were just talking about that. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it, uh, uh, the, how the whole thing shaped out. It was. It was a, a pretty good case, and I think the couple of the high points to take away from this is number one, it was a joint effort between two different agencies, uh, the Department of Job and Family Services here locally. Investigator Jim Hunter uh, really uh, deserves a round of applause, a hats off to him for mm -hmm. uh, the work that he put into a case like that. Um, you know uh, what we had there, generally speaking, was some folks that had. Uh, been abusing uh, government assistance, mm -hmm. welfare fraud, mm -hmm. um, by not claiming income. Mm -hmm. And that income in this particular case was ginseng. Um, and, you know, we're not talking about small amounts. We're probably talking upwards of $80,000. Over how many year period? Uh, about a dozen years. Wow. Uh, wow. And, and that's a minimum amount. Wow. You know, probably more than that wow. um, in the big picture. But, you know, um, that income that they were receiving from going out and harvesting the ginseng um, was not being reported, and so uh, the, you know the, those individuals were uh, were charged with mm -hmm. a couple couple felonies. Mm -hmm. They were they were convicted, and now they have to pay back okay. a, rest, a restitution value of about twenty thousand dollars to uh, the job and family for uh, the money that that you know that was um, improperly appropriated. So. Uh, again, well, it's, hats a, off good, to it's them. a good thing that that was solved. It was, and, it and I think you know, realistically, there's probably more of that coming down the pike. I think that uh, there's some situations where, you know, if in um, as far as welfare fraud goes, uh, if an individual uh, fails to claim a thousand dollars or more, mm -hmm. then that's a felony. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so, sure. Uh, in in the ginseng world, a couple pounds of dried ginseng and you're over a thousand dollars, pretty easily. So. Um, you know, I think you may see some more of this uh, activity or the, okay. the investigations take place in the future, which I think is a good thing because it protects us, the, the you know, the taxpayer out there, um, and for for not not being abused, not being taken advantage of. Do you have to be certified for ginseng? Well, the the ginseng certification um, is just a reminder to folks that if they are digging ginseng, and they're not going to sell it this year, that they are not allowed to possess it after March 31st without a weight slip. And what that means is, you know, ginseng is federally regulated. And so the, the, the Division of Wildlife, the state of Ohio, each year has to report the amount of ginseng that's harvested in our state. Okay. And so if someone digs ginseng from last fall during the ginseng digging season and then decides that they're not going to sell that because the price is low or whatever the reason may be, um, we still have to report that amount of the, the weight. So each year, you know, we have to submit a report to the federal government that okay. says, hey, in Ohio, we dug, you know, X number of pounds of ginseng this year, and this much was dug from each county, blah, blah, blah. And then, so, so <clears throat> if someone's going to possess it over, over, the, over the summer, basically, um, then they have to get a weight slip. They can schedule an appointment with us, but that has to be done before the end of this month. Okay. Okay. So it's important that, uh, and, and that generally is referring to or, or dealing with dealers. Okay. You know, if a dealer has several hundred pounds of ginseng, price is low, he's not going to sell. Okay. Um, the, he needs to get that weight slip taken care of before the end of this month. Okay. We're coming up on new license time, and there's also a new license system. There is, yes. Um, this year, uh, uh, as, as every year, uh, March 1st is the beginning of our new license system, new license year. So uh, if, you, if you haven't got a fishing license yet, you need to get out and get it. Okay. Uh, turkey season's around the corner. You'll need to get that also. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, just what, uh, and then, as you mentioned, Perry, the uh, new licensing system, most folks are not going to really notice that. But we do have, uh, behind the scenes, we have a new vendor that's selling licenses. Okay. 
So if you go online, you're going to see it's going to look a little different. Mm -hmm. Everything's mm -hmm. going to work the same, though. Mm -hmm. um, but along those lines, uh, keep in mind there are some things that may not be available for purchase yet. Primarily uh, deer permits, uh, fall turkey season permits, those kind of things don't need to be sold yet. So those modules really aren't in place that allow us to sell those yet. But you can get fishing, you can get turkey. Fishing, you get hunting, thing. spring turkey, okay. uh, those type of things are out there. As well as, I think, I think we're going to cover it here in a, in a few seconds, is uh, uh, some of our uh, lottery drawings. So we can talk about that when we get down to it. But, um, okay. but yeah, new licenses are available. Um, and uh, just, just be patient on a few of the other things that maybe aren't okay. on there yet. We've got about a minute and a half for this segment. Do uh, you want to talk about regulation changes? Do you want to try? Yeah, we can. Yeah, let's uh, okay. touch them just real, real quick. A um, couple, a couple changes. Nothing huge coming up for next year. But, you know, we always got to be looking into the future. And uh, our regulations have to be in place now so we can get our, our digest, the laws written mm -hmm. and passed and, and, mm -hmm. and ratified and things like that. So, um, Probably the two big changes here locally uh, that would apply to us um, is we're, we're proposing to change the regulation on the, on the straight walled cartridge rifles for anything between 357 and 50 caliber. Okay. Used to be a specific different, a specific types of firearms, specific gauges or calibers. Okay. Uh, but now we're just, to, to simplify that rule, we're just going to make it anything between those two parameters. Okay. That'll be good. Also, we're proposing to up our bag limit here in Guernsey County from two deer to three deer. Oh, so, okay. uh, a little more opportunity. And that's kind of cyclical, isn't it? It, it runs well, in it cycles, does. doesn't it? Yeah, you know, we've got to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah. And we don't want our deer population to get out of control. Yeah. So, if we, in, if we just slightly increase it, we're going to be able to keep it in that, in that uh, window of uh, population that we want to try to, to manage. Okay. So, two big changes there. Okay. And then, uh, the only other big thing I think that, that we could t mention here before we go away is um, proposing to change the youth waterfowl season age limit from 15 to 17. All of our other youth seasons are that are that 17 years of age limit, except for waterfowl. So we up okay. that, we give a couple of those young folks an extra year or two to go okay. and chase geese around. Okay. Hey, we're just getting started. We're gonna have Roby back for another segment, so uh, you know we're gonna come right back with more Roby here on Talk of the Town. Talk of the Town will be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back, and thank you so much for watching Talk of the Town. And we're back with Guernsey County Game Ro uh, Warden Roby Williams. Two segments, man. Second segment. Here well, we go. I, and, and we wanted to do this because you've got so much. I mean, we're at the early, early part of the year. And yep. all of the stuff that is going to be important to folks to know as we go throughout the year. It is. There is. Yeah, I, when I got to looking for uh, stuff to talk about today, mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a good bit of information yeah. to cover. So I'm glad we are, have an opportunity to do this. Let's talk about trout or okay. trout, if you want to say it the right way. Yeah, yeah, trout. Uh, uh, trout season, uh, well, our, our, our um, trout stockings 
are uh, right around the corner and those are a fairly popular event around here. Um, the the Cass Delia Fish Hatchery raises our trout for us and uh, we're going to be putting about 100,000 trout wow. in Is that 64 a typical public year? waters. Typical? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about what we do every year. Um, and it may be a few more, a few less, depending on how they grow and how, the, how well they do. But, now, what um, size are the trout when you release them? They're about them? 10 to 13 inches when oh, we turn them Oh, are they really? Yeah, they're catchable. Wow. You know, they're not, yeah. they're not huge. But, but they're uh, catchable. They're very catchable right. and, they're, and they're good eating size. Mm -hmm. um, I just, matter of fact, just smoked a couple of rainbow trout on my smoker last weekend and uh, oh, oh, oh. turned out really Didn't good. Didn't call so. me or Adam, did you? No, no. no. That's okay. Next time I'll give oh, you the oh, number. Oh, okay. cooking segment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. hey, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 10 to 13 inches in length. Um, uh, make sure you got your fishing license before you go out. Okay. Uh, you know, for here locally, Wolf Run will be on uh, March 23rd. Okay. Uh, the, the release, and then over at Bark Camp is March 22nd. Okay. Uh, Monroe Lake, we turn them loose uh, over in over in um, Blue Rock. We turn some loose too. Those dates are about the same, or close to that. You can look online and get the information. But um, but remember, it's five fish limit per day. Okay. So if you catch your five fish. Uh, you're done for the day, and, okay. uh, but good opportunity out there for sure. Uh, uh, oh yeah, for 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 young people to go out there and enjoy. Uh, yeah, trout people. fishing is a good way to learn patience. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Isn't it though? Yeah. So I don't have though. the patience to trout fish. Let's talk about a youth fishing instructor. Uh, youth fishing instructor. Uh, we do have. Um, uh, uh, a, a workshop coming up here locally that might be of interest if we have if, if it's an adult or a, a, a group leader of a, of a of an organization and they want to get their kids involved in fishing uh, we can certify folks to be a, a passport to fishing instructor gives them some credibility some uh, 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 coverage as far as that goes and then also gives them some opportunities for some resources okay got a lot of opportunities for us to uh, help people out with uh, fishing poles and gear and things like that um, we do have a, a, an instructor workshop coming up out at Deer Acid Park. It'll be March 28th as a date from 10 to 4. Um, you have to pre-register, so make sure you get that done about a week ahead of time, March okay. 22nd. Okay. You need to be registered for that, but get you signed up for it and, and good opportunity for folks to get out there uh, for an adult to maybe take those skills, learn some skills, and pass them on to young people. Okay. If you've been listening to the radio, you've been hearing uh, advertisements about banquets coming up. Everybody, this is banquet season, right? It is banquet season, and just a, you know, just a general reminder, uh, there's several different banquets coming up here uh, very quickly um, at this time of year that, that support conservation, so mm -hmm. I'd encourage folks to get out there and enjoy those if you could. Okay. And uh, with that said, uh, Stephen Bunn's going to be on our next segment to talk about the Friends of the NRA Banquet. Yeah, yeah, so we've got that coming up too. as well. Uh, what about Ohio Forestry and Wildlife, the conservation camp? That is a, a, a good camp. If you have a young person, a high school age person that has any interest in uh, participating in uh, uh, an outdoor camp like this, where you're going to go out and learn trees, learn animals, you're going to learn about wildlife management. Uh, last year they had an active uh, forestry logging site going on at the camp great opportunity for young people to go uh, my son was uh went last year came back and you know was able to uh estimate board feet in a tree oh is uh, that right yeah yeah so a lot of wow a lot, they learn a lot of hands-on stuff and there's a lot of opportunity for fishing and kayaking and swimming and and some of this stuff would be totally foreign to some young people now maybe they if don't it, know the outdoors it may be yes and if they have an interest uh, we're, we're, we're lucky it's up at Camp Muskingum in Carroll County. It's about an hour away. Uh, Jeremy Scherf, our, our staff forester is, is here locally, mm -hmm. is in charge of it. Uh, it goes on from June 11th to June 16th. Uh, the cost is about, I think it's $375, which is not cheap, but there's a lot of sponsorships available. Um, a lot of different clubs and organizations will sponsor kids to go. That. Okay. And so if a kid has an interest in going and they contact Jeremy or me or anyone, uh, I'm sure we can help point them in the right direction and help them get funded to get to, a, to get to the camp. But uh, if you're interested in going, you can go on, online and just type in Forestry and Wildlife Conservation Camp. I know we have a poster available uh, that you're probably looking at that you can see. Okay. And, um, and uh, get the information from there okay. and, uh, and, and hopefully get to the camp. You'll have a good time. Okay, a couple minutes left. Where do we stand on the dreaded emerald ash borer? Well, I think it's worth mentioning the emerald ash borer. Um, <clears throat> I walked out in my woods the other day and I looked around and I saw these uh, rusty brown trees that like all the bark was nearly off of them and I'm like what in the world's going on well the emerald ash borer is, is hitting those trees and what's happening is woodpeckers are going in there and uh, pecking away trying to get those insects oh okay. so if you see those trees in your woods that's most likely what's happening okay that tree's gonna die or is dead yeah and yeah. Um, you know be 
be aware of it. You're, we're going to see an increased woodpecker population. Uh, because, because of the boars. Absolutely, okay. because of that. And also, uh, you know, those ash trees, when they die, you've got to be careful because they are pretty brittle. Yeah. Um, and so high winds this time of year, springtime Take winds right come. over. You know, yeah. you want to be careful that uh, things aren't falling out of there and hurting people or property. Um, and, if, if, you know, if you, if you do fall those trees and uh, knock them down, uh, be careful because they will splinter when they hit the ground. I've had that happen. We've got about a minute left. Which of the two topics do you want to touch um, on? Let's talk on uh, turkey hunting. Turkey okay. hunting right around the corner. Okay. Um, you know, some do's and don'ts. Uh, number one, our youth season comes in April 22nd, 23rd this year. Again, as usual, two bird limit, but you can only harvest one bird per day. So if you're lucky enough to harvest a bird on Saturday and you're a young person, you can go back it again on Sunday and, and uh, you know, have a chance at another one. And then that Monday on April 24th, our regular season comes in. Okay. It goes to uh, May 21st this year. Okay. Remember, one half hour before sunrise to noon for the first two weeks. Okay. And then one half hour till sunset okay. on the last two weeks. All right. We covered a lot of stuff. We did. Appreciate you yeah. letting us come out. Well, thank you for coming out and doing that. And, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, our next segment, we've got Stephen Bunn coming in to talk about that Friends of the NRA banquet. Yeah. So, Roby, thanks for coming in. Good opportunity. Back with more after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home, locally owned since 1924, has earned the confidence of families they serve in the area. They provide quality service to the area every day and understand at the time of need, you want to find comfort in dealing with folks that know you and honors your faith and customs. You'll get straightforward answers on prices, services, and pre-planning. You'll find they offer a variety of options to personalize your funeral service. See Chris Gibson, Jim Law, or Jacob Coe at Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. You're watching Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. My next guest is Stephen Bunn. And I, I, I just have to, to, to preface this by saying I'm intrigued with the sheer number of hats that you wear. How many hats do you wear? I never know what you're going to be talking about when you come on. Well, let's see. I do work with the Cambridge Performing Arts Center. Okay. I do work with Pritchard Laughlin. Okay. I do work with the NRA. Okay. I do work with the uh, Guernsey Noble Beekeeping Association. <laughs> okay. And I also teach um, a specialized self-defense program. So about five different things. You're a little busy, aren't yeah. you? It's hard to hit a moving target. Yeah, <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But you are here to talk about the uh, Friends of the NRA banquet that's, that's coming correct. up. But start with the uh, Friends of the NRA. What's the organization all about? Well, first of all, most people, I think, have got some concept of what the NRA is all mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. But the Friends of the NRA is actually an offshoot or a subsection, if you would, that specializes or is dedicated to the idea of teaching hunting sports, gun safety and that sort of thing to our youth. So when the Guernsey County, be, uh, friends of the NRA, I'm sorry, um, works, all the monies and such that we raise, half of it comes right back into the county. Okay. Then we use it with the Boy Scouts, 4-H, uh, hunter safety. Last year we returned over $30,000. Back into it's the nice county. Chunk of change, right. Yeah. When, so I always tell people when they when they go to buy a, a, a raffle ticket or something like that, and they say they're never going to win. I said I understand that. I buy those, and sometimes I don't either. Mm -hmm. But I also realize on the other side of the coin, 
half of all that money is going to be right back in my own community. Mm -hmm. Last year, we actually finished a shooting range at the Boy Scout camp. Oh, we awesome. Built, yeah, so it's like there's a lot to be done. We're very, very mindful on safety. And uh, a number of our members are actually instructors and such. And so making sure that people are safe. I understand the ideas of guns because I watch the same movies that everybody else sure. does. Oh, yeah. But sure. the idea of, of safety is extremely important. And the agencies and the groups that we work with, what happens is people apply for grants. Mm -hmm. They write up a grant application. We take, at the end of our year, we have a big meeting, statewide meeting, and they say, Guernsey County, you generated $60,000 last year. You have $30,000 to spend on grants, and they give us a stack of grants to go through. And we go through those and select and support all these grants. And mm -hmm. we don't do just one. We kind mm -hmm. of sprinkle things mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. so that people get what they, they need. I always encourage people in Guernsey County to submit grants because if we don't get grants for Guernsey County, the money still needs to be dedicated somewhere else. And, and you brought up a point that maybe a lot of folks don't know about that you are there, you know, go ahead and submit the grant. You know, you never know. Right. You might get it. Exactly. And Scott and the rest of the committee, we work very hard to know what the grants are to encourage the people to get them the right. Grant writing itself seems to be a bit of an art. <laughs> or a law start. Yes. You know, a law right. start, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. we go through, and sometimes people ask for the world, and we don't quite have all that. Sure. But we do what we but can to support. A little chunk of the world is Absolutely. not out of the question. We, like I said, we did the, the shooting range. We've actually done uh, 22s and shotguns. We've mm -hmm. provided clay pigeons, um, ammunition, this sort of thing, so they can okay. be done at the range. Well, let's get to the, uh, the banquet. Give us the uh, when, where's, the what's. Okay. This is the 25th year of NRA. Friends of the NRA, rather. This is the ninth year for the Guernsey County Friends of the NRA. We started off our first banquet over top of Theo's n uh, nine years ago, and we have expanded beyond that a number of times. So Good. now we're out at Pritchard Laughlin. We'll be there Saturday, the 25th. Okay. And we will be having a banquet provided for by Theo's. Oh, I can always recommend, I can always tell a regular <laughs> when they come in because yes. once they get their plate, Situate in their yeah. seat. They walk over and get their they pie. They get the pie. They get instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get your no pie. dallying. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're going to have some rather mm. unique items this year that are kind of hard to find, but kind of unique. Uh, for collectors, we have a Colt Single Action Army 3220. There's going to be a Fostec Origin. It happens to be the world's fastest shotgun. Oh, wow. We have a cute little thing, and I really like it. It's called the Can, can Cannon. It actually will fire or loft uh, pop cans. Oh, is that right? Full, yeah, absolutely. It's just like, it's fun to play with. Wow. Uh, we have some suppressors. Um, there's a, uh, an AR platform that has a, uh, an echo trigger in it, which is very interesting. It's a binary trigger, which means that it fires both on the pulling and releasing, so oh. we can do uh, oh, okay. increased rapid fire. Okay. We've got about two minutes, so right. I just want to let you know that. We have, the, the cost of dinner tickets is $50. Okay. And there are packages available so that you can get other things. For instance, uh, the Good Citizen package at 300, you get meal tickets, you get uh, bucket items, you get a free battle horse knife. It's worth 150 oh, bucks. Yeah. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. those are nice too. Made right here. Right. If you want just a dinner ticket, you can contact one of the committee members, or you can also go online to nrabanquet.com, select Ohio, then click on the 25th, which will be out here, okay. and there will be a list of packages that are available, a whole list of things that are going to be uh, choices that you can have. But kids only cost $15 to go in. They okay. get the same meal. Okay. So it'll be a good time. It's been a good time for the last few years. I always like working it. Okay. And so well, it's I, good. Less than a minute. Um, how can, uh, can folks join the Friends of the NRA? How can they do that? Absolutely. We're always looking for committee members. We're all volunteers. It's just people who decide that they like what we do or the idea of what we do and are willing to do just some legwork. The overall thing of working is maybe we get together once a month just to make plans of what's coming up. If there's a gun show or a knife show, we go out and we do the raffles. All right. 
Friends of the NRA Banquet. It's coming up on the 25th at the Pritchard Laughlin Civic Center. Telling us all about it, the man that wears many hats, Mr. Stephen Bunn. And uh, I'm sure that we'll see you soon in another capacity. All right. At least this time I didn't, <laughs> I didn't make it snow today. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Back to wrap it up right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home, locally owned since 1924, has earned the confidence of families they serve in the area. They provide quality service to the area every day and understand at the time of need you want to find comfort in dealing with folks that know you and honors your faith and customs. You'll get straightforward answers on prices, services, and pre-planning. You'll find they offer a variety of options to personalize your funeral service. See Chris Gibson, Jim Law, or Jacob Coe at Bundy Law Funeral Home. That is going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so very much for watching, and thanks again to our special guests, Roby Williams and Stephen Bunn. Hey, the Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew brings you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm. Gift certificates and layaways are available. Ruth features a large line of decorative battery-operated candles, as well as your replacement batteries, and you can never find those anywhere. Ruth also stocks the bulbs you need for your wax melter. Stop by the Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue in Byesville. They are the big red building by the railroad tracks. Check them out online, oldcountryloft.com, or give them a call at 740-241-2219. Yeah, and thank you, Ruth, for all that you do for us. Is that it? For producer director Adam Green, I'm Perry Bronich. We will see you next time on Talk of the Town. Your sports authority in East Central Ohio is ESPN Cambridge. FM 107.9, AM 1270 on your radio dial. Featuring great programming like Mike and Mike, Dan Levitard, Ohio State Basketball, Reds Baseball, Blue Jackets Hockey, Select NFL Games, and College Football and Basketball. ESPN Cambridge is also your local sports authority too. Featuring local high school sports all year round with some viewable on cable TV 2 in Cambridge or streaming online at yourradioplace.com slash YRPTV. Your home for sports is ESPN Cambridge. FM 107.9, AM 1270. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. 
Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9.